Hey guys, it's the Addy Queen, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a crossover cowl on your 48 pin Centro machine. If you would like to make this on an Addy, I did make a video about this. Oh, I think it's been two months ago now, and I made a cowl on my Addy. In this video, I will be using Yarn Bee Feeling Gradient. Um, I got it at the Hobby Lobby clearance. I thought I'd try it out because I've never used yarn this thin. Whoa, I don't know why that's shaking so much. I've never really used yarn this thin in a project, so I wanted to see how it looked. So, of course, first off, we are going in with waist yarn. There we go. Since this is the cast on end. I'm not really going to do that much waste yarn. I never do as much on my cast on as I do my cast off. I'll do one more row. Um, this yarn I'm using as waste yarn, it was given to me from my grandmother. She got it at a yard sale. And the color name, I could you not is goose poop green. That is so weird. All right, so now I'm gonna take my project yarn right beside peg number one. I'm gonna leave a decent little tail, nothing too long. Let me set my row counter. And I'm gonna put this in the middle hole of our tensioner down here. I'm telling you what, I always get like so many tangles and it's not even when I work, it's almost always when I make a video, so annoying. So we are going to continue for 120 rows. All right, I have five more rows left. Of course, right at the end, my yarn tangles. See, I'm telling you what, when I turn on the camera, the worst things happen. Eighteen. One hundred nineteen. And 120. Now, just like at the beginning, I'm not leaving too long of a tail. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to take our waist yarn, go right beside the white. Oops, there we go. And this needs to go there. And it's really a preference thing of how many rows of waist yarn you do when you cast on and off. But I like to be better safe than sorry kind of thing, and I know that I do more rows than most people, which is fine, you know? It's whatever suits you and whatever you feel comfortable with at the end of the day. This waist yarn is such an ugly color, oh my goodness. I'm just going to do one more row to be safe. Cut. And then we'll run it through twice with no yarn to take this baby off of the loom. I must say my machine really loved this yarn that I was using. Like, I didn't have a single drop stitch or anything. And look at how pretty that color is. Give her a good stretch. See, that's just such a pretty color. So now we're going to grab our crochet hooks and close our two ends. 
after we folded this puppy in half, you want to make sure that your tails are at one end. I'm sure by now all of you know how to close a tube like this, but if you don't, I have plenty of other videos on my channel that show how to do this. There's a video on a twisted headband that shows this. My blanket videos show how to do this. A lot of my videos. That being said, I'm not really going into much detail of how to do this. All right, to finish this off, you're gonna need some buttons. You can do three, five, four, whatever. I do three, and we're gonna lay them out where we want them. Since this one's the only one that's different, but not one in the middle. And then we're gonna take a tapestry needle. Before you start, you do need to check and make sure that your needle fits through the head of your buttons, or you're just gonna have an awful time. You can sew this on with thread or whatever, but since this yarn is pretty thin, I'm gonna use my project yarn. You're gonna cut. Now thread it through our needle. Maybe. I find it helps if you twist it a little bit. There we go. Oh my goodness, I'm so stupid. That's attached to my project. We want what we just cut. I'm so sorry, guys. We'll get this eventually, right? Ooh. Okay. Layer button where we want it. You want to make sure to leave a bit of a tail. You don't want to pull it all the way through because... You do want something to tie your end to, to secure this button on. I'm gonna flip it over. Hi kitty, can you say hi? Okay, whew, got quite a bit back here. And tie a knot. And we're going to do the same thing two more times for our two other buttons or however many buttons you have. Now that we've attached all our buttons, we're going to fold the other side over them and make our buttonholes. To do that, I just kind of work my stitches loose. And we're going to tuck the button in the best we can. Hey, kitty. Let go with that. I'm just gonna work on it a little bit, go back and forth, and then our button comes through. And of course, the more this gets used, and the more times the button goes through the hole, the easier it'll be. It's just making these holes initially that's kind of difficult. Now let's get this over here. Make our last hole. And there we go. Um, you lay it flat. There's what it looks like with the buttons in the front. And I'm going to grab my mannequin and show you what it looks like on. Here's my cowl that I made on my Addy in my last video a couple months ago. 
how it fits on my little mannequin and her shoulders. And then we're gonna take this off and I'll show you how the other one fits. As you can see, this one lays over her shoulders more than the one I made on my Addy. And this is the look. Turn her around. Now oh, it's a little twisted. There we go. I really like it. I like the way this looks. Thank you for watching if you've made it this far in the tutorial. Happy crafting, everyone.